Yes, in fact, uh, this will be a talk about uh, an application, a possible application of the channel master. Uh, here, the motivation of this application of this study that is related to these two projects, Sedipas and Infase, that deal uh, with the sediment deposition in hydropower system and erosion of uh, structure. Mm -hmm. Yes, both in these cases uh, uh, we need to measure, let's say, continuously and a really, ball, uh, uh, really good uh, uh, large reliability uh, sediment, uh, suspended sediment concentration, in particular, uh, to eventually apply uh, CFD for a, a more for dynamics prediction. So usually these are uh, uh, tools used in the field. We already saw something in the previous presentation. Here you can see uh, a, a sampler. Uh, this steel fish is a sample that can, does, uh, uh, can do um, punctual sampling of water and sediment mixture. Or uh, here below you have uh, automatic sampling. This is the ESCO sampling that uh, with the peristaltic pump continuously fill uh, <coughs> an array of, uh, of bottles. And of course also ADCP, it's an option. Here you have uh, <coughs> the, I think this is the River Pro. Uh, it's an option at least uh, to measure uh, section by section uh, water discharge in this kind of condition. This is not the largest flood for this small river. But uh, it's, it's quite a lot, and uh, you can see that it's uh, somehow cha challenging the uh, coupling between the instrument and the water surface. So basically the idea is to try to use an instrument that it's already submerged during flood to avoid this coupling. And this is the channel master that uh, acts like uh, a sonar, basically, that they emit and receive sounds. Sound is backscattered from particles suspended. And we, we assume that these particles are suspended sediment transport. Well, here are some basic about the acoustic. Uh, the main reason for sound degradation is a spreading, that it's related to square radius, so square rhyming distance. And you can see here the beam that spreads uh, along this path. Then, of course, uh, if we want to do things more complicated, uh, we have uh, the near field correction. This is the intensity that we, we try to measure with the EDCP. And then you have some instrument parameter, but we are not too much interested in that. And we have a decay due to uh, water viscosity, that is, that is an attenuation of the soft sound. And there's an additional term that is what we are interested for, that is called backscatter here. And uh, that uh, scattered back the sound to the transducer. So this is what we want to assess by measuring the acoustic intensity I. Um, and there's a lot of studies in underwater acoustic regarding backscatter from spheres. That is not sediment, but it's something similar, say. And in this, these, uh, these are analytical studies uh, uh, 50 years ago or something. And we, we, in these studies, uh, you can see that there's two, two uh, regime of scattering, uh, depending on the size and the wavelengths, the size of particles and the wavelength of sound, basically for <coughs> uh, low frequencies or large particles, you have a geometrical scattering. It's related basically to the uh, to the size, the actual size of particles, the shade of particles, and uh, for a <coughs> high frequency uh, small particles, you have the light scattering that is <coughs> a quasi linear relation in a logarithmic scale between uh, sediment size and uh, light scatter, and the uh, MI regime that is a transition between these two uh, regimes. 
Then if we come to actual sediments, that's some empirical relation that we do to uh, Professor Thorne. These studies are now, I think, 20 years old. <laughs> and uh, we found out that uh, something similar also for sediment, empirically, uh, that's a, a related regime, and then a plateau that is a, a, a geometric scattering. Here you have three different frequencies. And, uh, <coughs> but uh, things get more complicated because you have also attenuation due to scattering in other direction. And you have attenuation due to friction between particles and water. So uh, basically, it's quite unpredictable if one or the other will uh, prevail. If the backscattering will prevail, if the attenuation due to scattering will prevail, if the attenuation due to friction, and it's worth noting that, for example, for fine particles, <coughs> you have very high attenuation due to friction, but low scattering processes, and the contrary for sand, for example. Uh, however, in our equation, we have to account of this term, of these new terms. This is the backscatter for particles that is a product between mass concentration and a coefficient of backscatter. And here we have the attenuation uh, due to suspended sediments that in terms, again, is a product between mass concentration and uh, a normalized attenuation coefficient. So let's go to the field so we wake up a bit. <laughs> and this is the Devil River in, uh, in Albania. And this is uh, uh, quite, quite a impressive flood. Uh, the higher floods are south of here, very close to the bridge. Uh, in this condition, you can't use the iron sand, for example. regarding both bottom level uh, discharge and uh, suspended second transport. Uh, one thing that it was <coughs> mentioning is that, that in this condition things appear very well homogenized or very well mixed. Say. <coughs> this is another case study. This one is in Italy. It's a lowland river. It's a bit more white. Uh, but also here we tried this method by uh, installing a the channel master here in the beach pier facing the current, the main current. And the idea is that uh, if we can assume that there's no gradient in concentration along the acoustic beam, and this is the uh, main assumption that it's due to Tambour, I think, it's five years old now, um, we can then uh, uh, relate uh, uh, the quality of suspended matter and the uh, concentration of suspended matter to the uh, acoustic intensity, to the shape of the profile here. Yeah. So <coughs> this is get more and more complicated, but <laughs> what I, I would like to stress is that we have an uh, acoustic intensity profile along the acoustic beam. And we have two information here. That is the two momentum, that it's the level of this uh, profile and this uh, 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 standard deviation, this shape. That's good. We have two information, and we can uh, uh, summarize that in sloping intercept coefficient of this profile in a quasi linear fit fitting. So we should be able, having two, two measurements or two information from the field, we should be able to assess both concentration and particle size distribution, or at least something related to particle size distribution, like the mean diameter or the standard deviation of the particle size distribution. Uh, now you have to have faith in me. <laughs> uh, there's some uh, trick here, some passages, and we recast uh, the sonar equation in a very simplified form. 
that uh, Adelaide uh, uh, suspended sediment attenuation to mass concentration through this coefficient that uh, is called the theta s that uh, uh, embed particle size distribution uh, features. Okay, and this could, both, could also see would be also seen as the instrument sensitivity to actual sediments in the suspension. Okay, so we measure that, and we measure also uh, the, the level, the backscatter. There's some trick. We have the attenuation to backscatter ratio, but it's related to this guy here. So if we can assess theta s, we also have alpha s. We can invert a really simple, in a simple way to get uh, the mass concentration, the blue term. So uh, that's a lot of hypotheses. Um, we tested that hypothesis based on our work. So uh, we try in a lab. This is a, comes from the analytical and uh, uh, let's say empirical works of Thor. Here we have casted his, his data set in ABR, activation to black scatter ratio, and instrument sensitivity on Y axis. And we found out that whatever the part mean size, whatever the standard deviation of different particle size distribution here, we have a quasi linear relation <coughs> in a range between ABR and instrument sensitivity, at least in a range between 10 and 10 to 8 as ABR. If the ABR is lower, we need a second frequency to retrieve this quasi-linear relation between, this time, the uh, backscatter to backscatter ratio and instrument sensitivity on the y axis. So the idea is Again, relate something that we can measure here on the x-axis to the instrument sensitivity on the y-axis. That embeds the quality of the material that is scattering. It's independent from, from concentration. So we tested uh, this scheme in a lab with a tank with homogeneous concentration, two frequency, 0 0.1, 8 megahertz, <coughs> and we find a very good prediction of instrument sensitivity with three very different particle size distribution. Place it sand to make it short. <coughs> and this enables the lower the lowering of the uncertainty in mass concentration assessment. Now we have only this uncertainty compared to this uncertainty. That is if when you fix theta s to a single value. Now we have a function here. Instead of theta s, we have a function. It's not more a constant. Okay. You can see pretty well also in an attenuation backscatter diagram that attenuation to backscatter ratio, that is the slope of these lines, does not depend on concentration. These are different trials, different tests with different concentrations. That is the size of the bubbles. All, the, all of them follow a single ABR. So we uh, coded this method in a MATLAB, MATLAB a graphical user interface. In the end, we want to validate the method in the field and we want the concentration time series in the field. So we have two, two main blocks of this user interface, the validation, and we find out the actual relation between theta S and ABR, or between instrument sensitivity and ABR that we measure. This is the theoretical <coughs> range, but from samples could be also different, we don't know. That's not only this, the theoretical range accounts for quad segments. And in the field, that's also other things. That could be also organic and whatever. Then you can do different try to have your final validated uh, time series. This is uh, uh, for uh, the Devil River in Albania. 
we did even another effort. We have like two years of samples, and we find so a, a very strong validation of our of this river that differ quite a lot from theoretical. Although this can be due to particle size distribution and uh, st uh, standard deviation. It's quite similar to the braid, braid that we see in the previous plots. And this allowed this allow to uh, uh, relate very well concentration from samples to concentration from uh, horizontal ADCP or channel masters as you like, that it should be compared with what you get with the fixed value of theta. As you can choose this one and choose one here, it depends the values that you want to fix. And uh, again, in a backscatter attenuation quadrant, you have different regions for PBR. So this means different, uh, different matter suspended in the water column in the water. <coughs> This is a region with a high backscatter low attenuation that was uh, experienced during low flow. A high flow we experienced low backscatter and high attenuation. And finally, I think this is the last one, if we can reconstruct uh, three years of water level discharge and corresponding uh, Suspended sediment concentration and uh, uh, water flow, flow, flow discharge stage or water level suspended sediment concentration stage. Okay, so, my conclusion are that ABR and secondary PBR are not depending on uh, concentration, so this can be used as, uh, as an indexes of actual in instrument sensitivity to suspended matter before the assessment of suspended sediment concentration. This was proved in a lab with a various pathway side distribution and for very different concentration for these two frequencies. And uh, we showed that field application uh, using horizontal ADCP enabled the ABR method. But, and this, this allow uh, uh, lower to increase uh, the reliability of the method, lower the overall uncertainty of acoustic method for suspended sediment concentration assessment. And last but not least, the RBR enables technical recognition of patterns in the attenuation backscatter quadrant, and I believe that this reflects the quality of suspended matter. That's all. Teledyne Marine. Everywhere you look.